Today we're going to take a structure that's just made out of lines and we're going to animate it as beams. So if I turn off the lines now, you can see that they slowly animate in, colored based on their type. And you can see that their beam sections, column sections, and I've got circular hollow sections for the bracing. And a reminder, you can get more tutorials like this at our website. And you can also download some of the scripts in this area here. And we've got some demo scripts you can test out as well. And feel free to have a look at some of our other services. We've got model conversion, rapid framing from architectural models, engineering visualization, reinforcement, and a lot more. Okay, so to make this tutorial quick, I've set up some structure and some profiles in 2D line work in Rhino. So all these are is that I've traced around some column and beam sections <coughs> with 2D lines and joined them up into polylines. And I've got them in the X and Y direction and one for the column, which is uh, in the X, Y plane. So as always, there are other ways of doing this, but this is just to keep this tutorial quick. All right, so I'm gonna start off by grabbing some of this 2D line work in Rhino into Grasshopper. So I'm gonna use a curve and I'm gonna call this profile X and copy and paste and profile Y and in the X I'm gonna get the one that's gonna attach to the lines in the X direction which is going to be this one and in the Y I'm going to get the ones in the Y direction, which is going to be this one. And copy, paste. I'm going to do one for the columns. And I'm going to grab that one for that. So you might also notice that the curves are centered around the origin of 0, 0, 0. And that's going to help us in the next step. So as I said before, I've got some structure as well, um, apart from the profile sections. So if I zoom max with the beams on, you can see I've got some structure. I'll turn it all on and you can see um, that I've got it in layers of beams. So just the beams. I've got the columns as a separate layer and I've got the bracing as another layer. So that's it all on. So I'm going to start with the beams. I'll turn everything else off except for the beams. And I'm going to get the beams in the X direction. So again, I'm just going to grab these from Rhino. I'm going to call this beams in the X direction. And I'm just going to go and maximize these other three screens and grab all the beams which are in the X uh, direction. So to do that, I'm just going to hold down shift, whoops. Grab all these beams. And let's see if I can get this one. Yep. Same with the Y. Call that Y. And I'm going to 
grab all the beams in the Y direction with shift down. Okay, so we've got X and Y beams. Next, we want some columns. So I'll just copy and paste that, call that columns. I'll turn the beams off. Now, I'm going to unpreview the stuff I've previously done just to clean up the screens. Turn on the column layer in Rhino. I'm just going to grab all these columns. And finally, the bracing. So you probably are able to tell already that um, I'm just using one beam for the entire structure here. And I'm going to use a different profile for the bracing, but once you know this basic step, it's pretty easy to put other section sizes in. Okay, so the next step is I want to grab the start point of all these beams. So I'm going to use endpoints under curve. I'm going to do this for all of them. And this is going to tell us where to start our 3D element that we're going to get from our profile. So once we've got that, we're going to create a vector to locate our profile um, and then move it. So if I just put in move here, Say I want to do the beams. Uh, the geometry I know for beams, beams in the X direction, is profile X. Beams X, profile X. And I need a vector. So as I said before, all my sections were around the origin 0, 0, 0. So if I just make a point, go manage point collection, Zero, zero, zero. So that's zero, zero, zero point. Then I can go vector. And you've got this one here, which is vector two point. So my origin is zero, zero, zero for these profiles. And I want it to be, I want that vector to point to the start of all of our beams. Just starting with X to for us initially. So there we've got our vector that I want to move all our profiles to. And if I just turn these previews off, you'll start to see it come up a little bit. Yeah, you can see there that it's put profiles at the start of all the beams. I'll just turn the bracing off as well. So the beams all have a little profile at the start of them. Then the next step is an easy one. And there's a couple of ways to do this as well, but I'm going to use this method. Extrude. And I'm going to use extrude along a curve. Because we've already got the curve information. So this needs a profile which we've already got, and a curve, which we've already got. So we've got our profile, which is in the right spot to start, and we've got the curve. And there you can see we've got our beams in 3D in the right spots. So now, obviously, we can just repeat that principle 
for the remainder, so copy and paste that. My origin point's the same, but now I'm doing beams in the wire, so I use this other start point, and I use this other profile, and and I use this curve. There you go, you can see. Now I'm going to just maximize this now, so if we can see that the beams are all in there now. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to do the columns. Uh, that's the geometry. The start point of the columns is there. And the curve of the columns is there. There we go. Okay. And the last thing is the bracing. I'm going to do something slightly different here. Instead of using the profile that I've already got, there's a simple command that's called pipe. So this is just very similar to a CHS, or as we call them, circular hollow section in Australia. Now the base curve is the bracing, and the radius, I'm just gonna use a panel here so I can adjust it later, and I'll make it 100 millimeters so it's a 200 dia diameter pipe and that gives us circular hollows for the bracing okay so that was pretty easy and now I'm gonna do a very simple animation of this 3D structure. I'm just going to unpreview some of this stuff and I'm going to turn off all my layers in Rhino so we can start to see it. So all I'm going to do in this animation is have the structure appear starting at the origin and working towards the end. So to do that I'm going to sort the start points in the y direction or you could do it in the x direction or the z it's up to you I'm just going to do it in y for this so for starters I'm going to use um, vector I'm going to split up a point into its components so I've already got the start point of all our sections I'm just going to do it all as one um, you could split it up if you want or do whatever you like, but this is just a quick demo So I'm just going to hold down shift and add this these start points one by one So the Y points what I want and I want to sort them Sort a list of numeric keys the Y's So this is a very good sort component because it's going to sort all my Y values from lowest to highest, you can see there. But it can also sort an associated list. So if I gave this sort component another list, it's going to sort them according to the first K value so that the output is uh, in the same order as the output of the K value in the sorted form. So we can use that. So if I put in my beams into this component in the same order, just holding down shift, that I did the Y values, and it needs exactly the same number in and out which it makes sense. 408 in, 408 out. So now if I 
show that as a prep. These beams are now sorted from their location of in the y direction. Along, I'm not, I'm not even using the values. I'm just using the order of the three D beams. So the next thing to do for this very simple animation is to split the list. So my list is the breps and I'm going to use the old slider. I'm going to set it up for real numbers and from memory there was 408 beams. Put that into index. Now I'll just unpreview this and to see it because it it gives the split gives the in and the out so um, I'll set up another prep I'll unpreview this so at index 0 there's nothing to be seen and you can see already that as I split the list higher and higher you get more and more of the structure which is a cool little animation effect and very easy to do. So the last thing I like to do is just set up a uh, preview, custom preview so that it's not this red stuff. So I'm going to put the geometry into there and I'm just going to set up a swatch, color swatch, choose any color. Oops say a light blue or something and then make it a bit darker it's a bit better turn this off there we go now if you want to bring this into another program there's a good way of doing that in grasshopper it's called animate there on a slider so you can just set a location for all your images you can give them a name you can say how many frames and this just gives you a preview of what you're going to see and you can just click OK there and it will export them all as PNG images so you'll end up with in this example 408 single frames and then you can use any program to animate to make a video there's loads of them out there um, I use Blender which is open source but there's thousands of ways of doing that uh, and then you can make little movies so you might want to leave it there or you could add some more color so if you want to keep watching, I'll quickly add some color to this animation. I'm just going to use the repeat component and the swatch. So I've got my color there and I'm going to repeat it the length of this list, so 96 times. So I've got 96 blue colors. That's for beams in the X and beams in the Y. Just using control and paste. This is for the columns. So I'll give it a different color. Give that like a purple. And then the last one is the bracing. And I'll give that a orangey color so I've all I need to do is just add another value to my sort and again I just add them in the same order that I did originally and then this gives me the colors in the right order so I just put that into that and there you can see that I've got my columns in purple, 
beams in blue and base bracing in orange and I can just animate it with a bit more color Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.